So uh, scaffolding is coming down. Hey, scaffolding's coming down there. Look outside. Um, it's a very frosty minus temperatures. Uh, be a few days of this, and then it go temperature go back up again with a bit of patches of rain. All the f uh, the boardings, all the uh, panels, all the boards, uh, they're all gone on this top side now. So it's just the lower part, next level down. But point being is. <coughs> It's really freaking my cats out because they can distinguish what is real and what is not real. Thus meaning I could play uh, most movie soundtracks and, you know, Saturn V rockets, whatever, blah, 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 earthquakes, whatever, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it doesn't bother them because the effects of it, yeah, is, you know, you could have probably the best sub bass whatever in the room. It's not going to be the same. <laughs> um, what I notice with the scaffolding, because I'm, like I say, an ex-projectionist, ex um, UCI and Warner Brothers, I know what to look for, what to f listen for, and what to feel for. What to feel for, thus meaning the scaffolding coming down and how it's mostly um, not totally physically attached to the to the outside walls but near enough and it's creating such a vibration and therefore my cats are picking up on it and it's freaking them now they're going in and out of the room they don't know which they don't know where to hide because then they hear it on the other side and then they go running the other way they got they're looking for a somewhere where they can hide now magic he got fooled by Ethan Hawke. He was a bird, wasn't he, in that movie, um, Training Day, uh, where you got the last 20 minutes of the movie or so, where um, he runs out onto the rooftops, and you got these sound of a pigeons going... They're flapping their wings, right? Magic can remember a sound of pigeons outside. So he could also... But it didn't freak Sooty out that much. I think Sooty was probably just a little bit sharp and realised, nah, that's not real. Um, but it fooled Magic, where Magic was inside this box. I've got a video of him, where he just suddenly pops his head out of the box, looking around, thinking, where are the pigeons? Because he thought they were in the room. The, acute, the recording of that wasn't like, say, like, you know, infrasonic, even though pigeons can hear infrasonic low frequency um he was freaking out thinking you know because the recording was so well done with the the, the way they're going and the wing flapping moving the panning it's so like uh oh well i, I would say it would um be like it probably be um binaural recording pans down because it was freaking him out <laughs> he, he thought it was so real and I kept teasing by playing it over in the scene again and playing it. But the scaffolding is really, because the amount of shaking and the vibration outside would be enough if I, it's too bad. Um, really, I didn't set up my microphone for the REM, Room EQ Wizard. Um, it's a bit, a bit late now for that now, because most of it's been taken down and it's not going to have much. Otherwise, I could put the microphones pretty near to outside or to the inside, to the wall, uh, where it may, may register some infrasonic low frequency. Um, but I could also feel it. Now, this is where you probably got to put sub-bass speakers attached to the wall outside. Because it, it figures. You think, think about it, uh, how the floor concrete floor and how that's done it's not just concrete it's, it's metal poles and such going or such going going underneath and then concrete goes on top uh traditional uh, would be uh um wooden jo uh, floor joists and such and you got the outside anything going against the wall and then it's just going to transmit through those uh joists thus you're going to feel it <laughs> Um, maybe a little bit unwise for some some people with their sub bass because they they got a bit of this ego thing Americans do they really got this ego thing 
Um, <clears throat> so they'll probably pick up what I'm going to say by putting sub bass speakers on the outside. Because if you're going to create this immersive realism, then you've got to go to those sort of lengths to get that sort of uh, almost desired effect. The same goes with putting them under the ground as well, because where do you think earthquakes come from? Earthquakes do not happen airborne in midair. They happen under the ground, miles under the ground. <laughs> um, but probably said that now, probably some idiots will probably think, oh, wow, that's a brilliant idea. I didn't think of doing that. Of course you didn't think about doing that. That's why you're not, you know. <sighs> but if you do do things like that, you've got to do it at a low level, so to speak. And a low level is very difficult because you won't get much output from that sub that before it can even do anything, you're probably going to be pushing that sub. Not, no, you'll be pushing that amplifier way too near to clipping. You'll be running out of amplifier power and doesn't matter. You've got to do it at the minimum to get the uh, effect, which is not easy because you've got to work out what magnitudes, how earthquakes are actually produced, how they actually cause that sort of shake and kind of simulate that with maybe mm, something like a heavy pounding tonnage of outside, maybe hire a wrecking crane ball and kind of just raise it, up the, raise it off the ground a little bit and then drop it down slightly so it goes boom. And, you know, not high. It doesn't have to be really high. The higher it is, it makes a certain different sound. The the lower it, the, the, you raise it off the ground just a little bit and then back onto the ground, it'll have a certain rhythmic frequency, kind of like a sine wave, so to speak. It'll have a slightly, uh, it'll probably have a longer wavelength. Um, that might give some idea. And then you've got to then figure out how to do the subs, more or less, to get that sort of because it was subs and that they're stupid and you don't need a, a 50 or even an 80 inch sub base um, depending on where it's depending I suppose on where it's located uh, under the ground that is um, and being under the ground it's got to be easy accessible so you can maintain it <laughs> Uh, otherwise you do it in the room sort of thing it's just not the same you, it's not that's not earthquakes earthquakes um, I guess earthquakes don't have bass that comes up and hits you in the chest it doesn't do that it's it's the opposite you'd be if I if this building suddenly, suddenly had an earthquake right now of a magnitude of say 3.5 uh, with a duration time of maybe say one minute um, if I was to suspend, suspend myself off the floor I would hear the sound of it through the walls and the floor obviously because it's all attached to the ground if the building were suspended away from the ground I wouldn't notice it they'd be like huh what it's like being on a boat with wavy waves and you start doing that, don't you? <laughs> Only it's not an earthquake. <laughs> but it's similar because they're waves. And that's what earthquakes do. They go in this direction, that direction. They move around in different wave patterns. And that's what makes the frigging... You do that. <laughs> and I have yet to... Uh, it, it actually experience it firsthand. Every time a bloody earthquake happens in the UK, <laughs> most people happen to be sleeping through it. <laughs> they can get woken up by it, you know, because it was the epicenter was miles away, and by the time the the waves got down so far, it was just like a little shimmering effect. Um. But I think you wouldn't even probably get anywhere near to doing that with um, sub bass speakers, not even bass shakers. They'll just put, they'll just do sound transmissions through the blooming wood beams, uh, floor joists, sub bass speakers, 
uh, pushing air or whatever it is against the wall. Um, hard to say. It's trial and error. Um, it's trial and error. I mean, some people have made sub bass speakers so damn large out of concrete where they're under the under the floor. Um, large flipping things. I don't know what that would have uh, felt like, whether or not it had room knolls in the room, you know, because every room is um, going to have room knolls and such. No room's immune. Um, unless it's outdoors, of course. It's a total different thing. Um, yeah, so it's got me thinking about that, you know. Um, because when you put bass shakers on seats or these, uh, these hover sub bass things, you know, it makes the seats bounce up and down. Um, the moment you get out of the seat, the illusion is gone, you know. I've been to THX cinemas where where literally standing at the back of the auditorium, it was pressing against my chest. It was against, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's touching my hair as well. My face, my groin, my thighs, my my, my legs, even my shoe, well, well, obviously my feet. <laughs> it was doing completely uniform. I'm thinking, where the heck is this energy coming from? Because um, that takes quite a bit of... Um, engineering sort of thing to get that sort of acoustical but if that was an earthquake nah that's not how earthquakes happen they, you don't feel them pressing against your body just as standing outside watching traffic go by you don't feel it pressing against you on a day-to-day -day basis nobody i mean nobody feels sound pressing against their body there might be an atmospheric pressure all around us that we that we don't really sense because we take it probably for granted. If we were, let's say, going out of space, uh, gravity that is, if we go into space, we, we notice something, our memory, to a trained, to a trained, highly, highly intellectual mind, would notice the difference and think, wow, that's, 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 it's almost like being in a swimming pool, only I'm not getting wet. <laughs> it'd be something like that it's too bad really it's too bad not a lot of people can go into space it's uh, really a shame really a really a all I can say is a, it's a real big huge pity not a, hardly many engineers have been into space you know, think about that <laughs> um, because all it'll be is similar to being in a swimming pool only you know you could be in a space suit in a swimming pool and not get wet but you need divers you know to move you around because it's not easy to move around it's not the it's similarish in feeling but it's not the same as in say if i would have put my hand against a wall and then suddenly push my way away from it i would go at a pretty fast speed and got to be careful because then I've got to be able to turn around quickly and then see what I'm kind of going to be hitting um, and you got to you know to put your hand up and I'm not sure how it would feel if, if I was breaking my you know to sort of like would I go back slightly again would I feel a kind of jolt in my arm a kind of jolt Hmm, see, that's, 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 what, that's how I think, having never been up there. I think it's, uh, I think it's a real big pity shame, really. Yeah, real big pity. <laughs> but I think they're almost finished out there now with the scaffolding. Well, where's my cat? Oh, magic uh, bears down here. I'm not sure where magic is. Oh, I look outside this window. <laughs> Scaffold is gone. <laughs> Was once there for about, I don't know, three months. And now it's gone. So it's almost coming up to an hour. So it's taken them just, just probably, and then they'll drive off, and it's just probably, say, about an hour. I can't find magic. 
Don't know where magic is. No. Just a pipe there, a bit of scaffolding there. Yeah. Can't find where magic is hiding. He's really a bit, bit uh, kind of shook up by it. He's probably in a void, hiding. So, sort of look out the window, yeah, it's just moving around out there. It's almost gone. Yeah, about another yeah, 30 minutes and they'll be gone. Must say, yeah, they got their gloves on because that scaffolding's going to be pretty damn cold to touch it outside. Uh, not something I would like doing. Um, where's Bear gone? He's moved. He's, is he clo under cloaking device down there? No, he's moved. He's, I don't know where he's gone now. Because, uh, yeah, oh yeah, he is. I don't know where magic is. I don't know where magic's hiding. Oh, there's magic. He was hiding, hiding under there. Oh, you were hiding there last time, weren't you? Yeah. So, you know, putting all these sub base things on seats and, um. Oh, dear. Yeah, it's, uh. To get that sort of, um, that sort of, you know, that. so it's like doing that. And you do that, it's like, bloody hell. Whew. You know? Um, because if you just make a seat do it, it's it's not the same. It's a, it's okay, so to speak. It's, a, it's an okay sort of uh, thing, but it's... As soon as you get out of the seat, it's just like not you know not going to do that. You know you got to make the floor, the entire floor, and not the seat, because the seats will be attached to the floor. Rem, rem u e q e wizard. Um, no, oh, what's bear doing? It's okay, they're not outside, they're not literally outside, they're only outside side. But they're not outside outside, but if you know what I mean. It's okay, Bear, see? He knows, he 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 knows. He knows, you see. See, if you can get a sort of sense of realism, right? See, I know it's not really uh, scary, but it can be scary. Um, a very few pets I've seen with videos with atmos you know trying to react to the atmos yeah it's not really that it's not really atmos you know you know that don't you everybody you know atmos is only uh, uh, an encode decode process you know a way to put sound overhead it's not really you know you pull it away from the regular channels you can pan it away and then just move it up overhead what or whatever um, and that's just about as much as it can do can't do anything else can't go uh there and then go below you know can't do that so 10 years of a bit of a waste of atmos um yeah I'll go, you only have to experience real life sound for a trained person like myself uh, for just le less than one minute and it's like a whole better than a two hour movie of Atmos <laughs> because <laughs> Atmos <laughs> yeah so it's not really practical for me to put sub bass speakers outside it'd be okay if I could uh, and then of course you know it's like you know it's got to be weatherproofed obviously and um not not really a big well think about it it's kind of like if you have another room okay um next to your other room put the sub base in that room and attach it so it's against the wall you can't just put the sub base in that room you've got to attach it somehow attach it to the wall uh what way uh oh gosh there uh, could be several ways of doing it um you got to make some more obviously DIY so MDF that's cheap uh, get some uh, best cheap good uh, sub bass drivers that you can get uh, for cheap 
uh, you probably need to make a couple of ideas and then attach them to the wall. So one where the base drive is facing the wall itself, but it's got to be literally sealed. So it's attached to the wall. OK, and do another one that's kind of reversed, but with the magnet structure. So it's against the wall. I mean, really hard touch tucked into the wall uh, you probably have to make some other special modification maybe like some MDF and cut a hole around where it would fit tightly uh, with the uh, magnet structure so it kind of be like a, um, a, a sleeve or something and it would go over it uh, maybe with a bit of rubber or I don't know something something like that so you can make it really and then bolt that right tightly up against the wall in the box obviously and make it sealed so it's not venting so all the energy is going to be in that box and going against that wall um mm, that will create the uh i don't know the the fourth dimension um, or maybe the real three dimension so to speak and if you've got a basement i would say get out of that bloody basement right get into the room above and then fit the sub base right against the bloody ceiling in the sub in in the basement. And in the room itself, obviously, um, you only need a few sub base, you know, just to even it out to get the the tone of the frequency, yeah. But also, you only need to play it maybe a um, bit of trial and error. I think this one would be. Um, uh, very, very much trial and error. Um, but get that part even, and then you'll be able to turn it off and then listen to or feel well, listen, feel because you'll still be able to hear it audibly. Uh, how the other sub bass speakers are, you know, and <laughs> um, in, in the in, in someone's hands, that's probably going to be careless. They might, they might do end up doing structural damage to their home. <laughs> um, it's possible. Um, of course, you test it with sine wave tone. So obviously, once you've got it all fitted up and you know, put some sine wave tone. Measure it, measure, make sure you've got a level volt level meter on everything so you can see what level voltage you're putting in, right? And say, like, put one volt, whatever, into the into the whole thing and with a sine wave, at, I don't know, start at 20 hertz. And if you can get, a, if you can feel something, um, but you, the one thing you, you should be look, listening out for is you don't want it to kind of rattle. That's going to be very hard. That's going to be very. That's going to be a big challenge. That, um, to you know, to go round and then secure these little things that are just rattling and just secure them a little bit. Um, would would this whole thing bring the wall down? No, <laughs> no, it won't. A wrecking ball going at it. A a car driving into a room and then just bumping gently into the wall would be enough. There will be enough foot pound there even going at a few mile an hour, it wouldn't be enough to just probably buckle that wall slightly. Not the whole wall crashing in, but enough just to buckle it, to damage it. And then you're going to get need a surveyor to come in and say, oh, we're going to have to demolish this wall and rebuild it. <laughs> what the bloody hell was he doing? Oh, I just purposely brought a, uh, a car in and just, you know, I just wanted to see what the effect is like, like Hollywood. Oh, oh, all oh, right, I see. <laughs> so, you got to test these things. You know, you can't just take a sub bass speaker and think, oh, it's going to do that. <laughs> uh, and, and of course, sub bass speakers in the uh, ceiling, of course. But not just so they're in the ceiling, uh, so that, again, the magnet structure is resting down tightly against the. Um, the joist because when you put a speaker's free air and it's even even if it were free air and the magnets touching this here i would get i would get a vibration i would get an infrasonic feel 
I might do a video uh, later in the day. I don't know if I've got any other sp uh, speakers that I could use. Um, yeah, I've got a few other JBLs I could use. And I could uh, even test it with that. Um, just just for a couple of minutes and then I'll just pack it away. Um, oh, I can hear some. I think it's just... They're mostly down on the uh, the ground uh, uh, on the ground outside, uh, so it's just probably just a couple of uh, scaffolding pipes they just uh, moved. Uh, what time is it now? Um, yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, I thought they would be doing this still to about eleven o'clock, but no. Oh no. It's only taking them just about an hour. Wow. <clears throat> um. Yeah. See, most people, they 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 like to think they are really big into sub bass and such. But um, now you've got to do what I say, because that's really the challenge. Me myself, I can't really do it here because uh, I like to. <laughs> I like to. I could do it on the inside, but. Um, yeah, I could get into the loft, I could. I could get into the loft and fit something up there. Um, probably only need to fit probably a, a big mama sub, but doesn't necessarily mean it's going to do it, you know? And, and locate that middle, roughly middle of up here, and have it so the magnet is down and then build a box all around it. And have it all totally sealed, so all the energy would be in in that box, and uh, and then have some, uh, I guess, t -t 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 some tubes coming out, a couple of tubes, say four of them, um, so they will be going uh, over this direction, that direction, this and that direction, and that direction, and then coming down into the room with an opening of so so many inches. Uh, and see what that would be like. I guess. I guess it would vibrate. I'm. Without a shadow of doubt, I'm guessing it would totally give a v vibration, and eventually it would probably dissipate. Um, because it, it's usually the lower frequencies that would do that shaking. But once you go up, maybe getting into maybe going above 20 it will gradually start to change and then eventually if you get up to say i don't know it's hard to say really maybe 50 60 80 hertz it'll probably start getting less because there's you know you probably have to tune it different or design it differently uh but to get that 80 hertz it wouldn't fit it wouldn't be a pressing against your body no but it'd be enough to probably create a say a an effect where it shakes but as to uh, what possible unforeseen uh, probably um, <laughs> I don't know would it would it loosen brickwork I don't know I don't know all I know is that mostly uh, it, it should you know because of the joist and they will be attached to the walls and it probably create a an extra dimension of, you know, because if I do it with the subs in the room, I can get the subs down to about, well, I can get them down to infrasonic, but, you know, they're going to generate some harmonic frequencies there, and you don't want harmonics. Anyway. Meow. What do you think of that there, eh? Yeah, they're all packed up now. They're all packed up now. You can relax. You can relax. It's all tensed up. It's all, it's all tensed up. See? He knows. He knows. <laughs>